Welcome back scholars for what is the final planned video in stoichiometry and to get you to think about percent yield and actual yield I want you to look at this other example that we used previously with the nitrogen and hydrogen in the reaction to make ammonia and we had already found a limiting reactant we had already found a theoretical yield with these and the important thing to realize is that reactions don't always go according to plan. Many times there might be other things that could occur at the same time as the reaction we're interested in. And those side reactions can take away from the amounts of reactants that we have. They can reduce the yield of the product that we actually form. When that happens, we make less than the theoretical yield for what we would predict based off of the balanced reaction because some of that mass, some of those reactants are actually forming different products than the one we're interested in. In those cases, those smaller amounts of products are called actual yields and the actual yield of a product is never more than the theoretical yield of the product. The theoretical yield is always going to be the most product we could possibly form from the given mixture of reactants. But the actual yield could be the same as the theoretical if there are no side reactions, but typically it's actually less than the theoretical yield. The key here is that the theoretical yield is always calculated based off of the amounts of reactants that we have mixed together, whereas the actual yield is always measured. We can compare the actual yield to the theoretical yield by using something called a percent yield. And so from the reaction above, the theoretical yield is 24.3 grams of ammonia. But if we only recovered 20 grams, what's the percent yield? We always put the actual yield over the theoretical yield to find the percent yield. So our 20 grams that we recovered divided by our 24.3 grams that is our theoretical yield times 100% gives us our percent yield. And recall that a percent yield must always be less than or equal to 100% because the actual yield is always less than or equal to the theoretical yield. So 100% is the maximum it can be. If you do an experiment and you think you recovered more product than you could theoretically have made, then the product might still be wet. It might not be dried completely and you might have extra water there that's changing your mass that makes it seem like you've got more product even though you really don't. If you have filtered something out, sometimes people forget to subtract the mass of the filter paper. If you have created a contaminated product where there are things other than the product you wanted to be there that are adding to the mass, then it might seem like you have greater than the theoretical yield. So the key thing to remember is that the actual yield can never be higher than the theoretical yield. And if it seems like it's higher, then there's something wrong, either with your calculations or with the method that you've used. Now, just like any good equation, we can manipulate this percent yield, even though we're saying percent yield equals 100% times actual yield over theoretical yield. We can manipulate this equation. Besides solving for the percent yield, we could solve for the actual yield. If you know the typical conditions that are used in a reaction, and you know what the typical percent yield is, then you might say for that same reaction, under different conditions, the yield is 60%. If our actual yield, or sorry, if our theoretical yield is still 24.3 grams of ammonia, what is our actual yield of ammonia? Notice that I wrote 60% as 60 over 100. 
that let me write it as a percent without writing it as a decimal, but it still means the same thing. To solve for the actual yield, you have to multiply the percent by the theoretical yield. So 60 times 24.3 gives 14.58 grams of ammonia, which of course with three sig figs would be 14.6 grams of ammonia. If the percent limits you, for now I'm assuming it doesn't, but if that 60 was all you knew, then that might look like it only had one significant figure, in which case your actual yield would be 10 grams, keeping significant figures. Just like we can manipulate this to solve for the actual ammonia, we could also manipulate this to solve for the theoretical ammonia. So let's say under a different set of conditions, I wanted to be able to form 10 grams of ammonia, but I knew that it was only 50% yield under those conditions. I could calculate how many grams of ammonia my theoretical yield would be, by multiplying both sides by X and dividing both sides by 50%. 50% is the same as one half. 10 divided by one half is the same as 10 times two. So my theoretical yield of ammonia would be 20 grams. And the advantage of this approach is that then once you know your theoretical yield, you could work backwards to figure out how much reactant you needed. And from the 20 grams of ammonia, you would calculate grams of nitrogen and grams of hydrogen. And that is what you would then mix at those conditions where you knew you only had 50% yield. So this equation for percent yield, you should be able to manipulate and you should be able to solve for any of those three terms in the equation.